Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Security Angle. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst at The Cube Research, and our conversation today is centered around agentic AI and how it can be used for brand protection and security. We talk a lot here about generative AI, and I think it's safe to say that that's kind of been the buzzword over the course of the last year. Agentic AI, however, is today's new buzzword, and with good reason, because it brings some capabilities that are really impressive, and that's what we want to talk about today. In this series, my goal is to always explore what's happening in the security sector, discuss industry trends, customer challenges, and I love highlighting vendors who are doing interesting and revolutionary things. That is why I'm excited about my guest today. I'm joined by Rick Farnell and Eliano Marquez, Tracer's CEO and CTO, respectively. Gentlemen, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Thanks for having us, Shelley. Absolutely. Absolutely. So set the stage here a little bit. Digital brand misuse is and it can be a real challenges for, challenge for organizations, especially today with Gen AI being in the hands of so many. Uh, Tracer has developed a suite of brand protection products that they're calling Next Gen Brand Protection Solution. It uses human in the loop, AI and machine learning to dramatically shorten the time from detection to enforcement by intelligently automating the review process and automatically offering an enforcement recommendation. So to me, that sounds like what you're doing is serving up a big, fat, easy button, and I like it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So so brand protection, though, why does it matter? You know, um, it might surprise you to learn that, according to the FTC, the most frequently reported form of imposter scams is the business imposter. Scammers who claim to be affiliated with a well-known company or a financial institution, and their goal is simple. They want to separate you from your money. And it's been estimated that these scams resulted in about $10 billion in losses in 2023 alone. So let's start this conversation talking about digital brand misuse. Rick, share with me a little bit more about digital brand misuse. What is it and why is it such a challenge? Yeah, thanks for thanks for having us on the show, Shelley. I really appreciate the time. Brand misuse is really an opportunity for uh, brands to take control of how their consumers, how their customers are treated digitally. And we often think about, uh, you know, utilizing technology to market to folks, to get more products, to get more usage. But uh, the bad guys that are out there have access to unprecedented technology that can dupe, fake, trick, scam, fish, fraud, all of these consumers with incredible, incredible uh, technology that makes it look as if they're impersonating the brands that we protect. So uh, we're really excited with our floor release and to, to step into a whole new future to use AI for good in order to protect literally the billions of customers of our customers that we're protecting on a regular basis. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, Eliana, talk with me a little bit about how the advent of Gen AI makes controlling brand fraud even more difficult for CIOs and, and security pros and brand managers. I mean, protecting the brand has long been important to do, but how does Gen AI make that harder? Yeah, like, you know, um, I think the, the whole um, innovation that is coming through the Gen AI that already occurred and will continue to occur will just... Uh, expand on what Rick said. Uh, people that are trying to uh, harm consumers one way or the other, having access to uh, this new wave of tools that will enable content to be created at a higher velocity and uh, will just make um, the brands uh, more, um, uh, you know, more, um, Maybe set maybe it's more uh, suspect to or more. Um, why are we both just totally failing on finding the right word? I think to brands. Yeah, and 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 the the threat schemes are highly sophisticated. Yeah, so it's no longer just a fake website or a marketplace listing. The bad actors have highly sophisticated marketing strategies to get people to click and interact and act. So very often, you know, it's not just a rogue website that looks like you're interacting with the website or 
counterfeit products that you don't know are counterfeit products being sold right. on any one of you know 400 marketplaces around the world or social media strategies. It's the integration of all of that that yep. at Tracer we're finding. So we are not just taking down a website. We are taking down the entire correlated bad actor network that is trying to do fake and fraud consumers. Right. Well, and I think one of the things that I try to use to explain sort of the, you know, generative AI is a, a wonderful thing um, and, and certainly something to be excited about. But as excited as we are about integrating Gen AI into business operations and being able to experience increased productivity and efficiencies and all of that sort of thing, well, threat actors are doing the very same thing using generative AI. And I think that what what they're using Gen AI for, you know, you used to be able to, you know, if you were paying a lot of attention, you could kind of detect a rogue email or a text message. And some of it is just the nuances of the language used or the spelling, um, you know, and you could kind of pick out, um, you know, maybe what those threats were. But what's happening with the use of Gen AI is that this is allowing um, the campaigns that threat actors are creating to be more perfectly worded right. and to be yep. more effective. And so I, I think it's important to understand that as we all are rushing to embrace Gen AI in the business world and, and reap the benefits, so are cyber criminals. Exactly. And, and really, when you think about the speed of uh, creation, um, the, the, the simplicity um, and the ecosystem of tools that enable you to create massive um, campaigns in an ecosystem of uh, channels, if you will, from social media to an ad to a website to... Uh, uh, a particular uh, listing on a marketplace, um, it's uh, it's going to explode, and yeah. brands um, will 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 not have all the time that they probably had in the past to yeah. rapidly adjust. Um, the speed of which an attack might come, maybe on a smaller product, but it's only online for uh, a week, two weeks, and then before they even get spotted, they shut down and they try with different vector of attack it's going to be uh, increasingly challenging for brands to actually you know keep up with their brand security i think that's that's essentially why when you think about one of the areas where ai for good um really needs to um to really help us as as, as humanity it's really in this space is it really affects all industries you know we recently were even talking about how food actually is going to get impacted by this, or it's already, by the way. Right. And we will also have on healthcare with, you know, you may be thinking you're logging in into your hospital and you're providing credentials because the website is exactly an impersonated right. version of a particular hospital, but, you know, it's actually a fake. And with those credentials, somebody is actually utilizing that to do some yeah. harm to an end user, but maybe that website is online for three days and then it's down. And um, there is no better um, a place for you to really apply AI um, because every single day that uh, Tracer and we really take down a, a particular thread, we are actually uh, proud uh, of the end consumers that actually got helped by that. And uh, we just really need to do this at scale across uh, all vectors to really help with that challenge. Yeah, when I think about this challenge and, you know, your point about the speed of things, um, what I think about this is that if you think that things are moving quickly today, buckle up, because we haven't seen anything yet. I mean, we haven't really seen Gen AI at scale. We haven't seen this, you know, we're at the real still, we're still in the nascent stages. So I kind of think when I think about this, I think about this is kind of trying to do this on your own is like playing a game of whack-a-mole, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And that's exhausting. So, so I want to talk now about Flora. So Tracer has developed and just launched Flora, which you're calling the first agentic AI developed to find and take down the misuse of brands like this is in Personas. Talk with me a little bit more about Flora and what you've built there. Yeah, and maybe I can I can start, Eliano. Feel free to jump in. I think the 
Um, you hit the nail on the head. The whack-a-mole game that's being yeah. played uh, really for the past 15, 20 years in brand protection. I think the traditional, more traditional cybersecurity market has deployed more automated technology throughout the past five, seven years. But brand protection, kind of as it relates to legal and maybe some of the brands, uh, there's still a lot of human intervention. Yeah. So we are taking a very, very different approach. We are uh, utilizing ways in which we can take all of our customers' directives, the things that they want to find out there in the digital universe, uh, we can then find it. We have our own computer vision capabilities. We have our own learning capabilities that allows the software to determine in hundreds of milliseconds whether or not something is authentic, meaning it is from the brand or one of their partners, or it is not. And when it is not, then we kind of make a decision to determine if we can actually take it down. Uh, so all of that happens with software, and, and it's a really amazing, amazing innovation that we are, you know, we're not talking about doing this next year or two years. We have this in production, uh, serving, you know, hundreds of our customers, therefore protecting billions of human beings on the planet today. Yeah. So, and maybe I can add a set of components there because I, I, I think we, we before just discussed about scale, um, like we are scanning millions and millions of threads online every single day. And when you think about uh, really the, the benefits and what differentiates Flora and its agentic capability is when you think about an entire workflow uh, where you first need to analyze the thread, put it into context of the brand, or by the way, the brands that are being attacked because some threads are not exclusively to one brand, it can be multiple brands. But then you think through, okay, there is a certain type of analysis that you need to do that are specific uh, to a certain set of skills, and you need a certain set of uh, knowledge to be able to overcome. And once you are able to say, okay, well, this particular thread is relevant or not to this particular brand or brands, as you move through that workflow, you need a completely different set of knowledge to understand the legal aspect of trademarks, copyrights, and patents. And that knowledge, it's totally different from understanding if a threat is important or not for a particular brand. You might need, you might need customer guidelines, right. and, but you might also need internet knowledge about that particular trademark or copyright or patent. Uh, once you kind of go through that and you are more aware, okay, this is an issue, I know the legal standpoint, this is online on this particular platform and on this particular channel, and you need to cre pre create and prepare a ton amount of information to be able to go to that particular partner and say, we, we really need you to take this down because this yeah. is hurting this brand or these brands. Here is why, and here is the legal context, and here is the information you really asked us to put together. Now, yeah. as you can imagine, this whole workflow does not equate to a single document or a single prediction or a single threat on an image. It actually is a system that autonomously might need to go and query a particular database, may query the internet, may need to get additional information that he didn't have at the time that we received the threat. And our agentic capability is that autonomous uh, piece that I just mentioned that right. reads every threat individually to try to maximize uh, the knowledge that it has to minimize the time that that threat is down, taking into account where it is located. Yeah. This is why we think um, that this is really groundbreaking and we're really thrilled to have been able to build this from scratch in record timing to really help this sector. Well, and, and speaking of building this in record time, what I am seeing is that Floor is powered by eight, an 8 billion parameter special purpose LLM that you've developed. And part of the value prop here, part of the Flora value prop is that it reduces the time infringements are online by up to 80%. Well, I mean, that's not insignificant. Um, and, and speaking to your point about scale, um, 
floor instantly identifies which infringements are relevant and then connect, collects legal evidence for brand misuse. You were just speaking about that and takedowns at AI speed. So this is faster. This is kind of grunt work in some ways, but it's faster um, than humans can do it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I was going to say, Shima, I think not only it's faster, but it, it learns. So the, the power yeah, of it is as we're seeing patterns of either geographic uh, so on behalf of all of our customers, as we're seeing patterns in South America or North America or Europe or patterns on online marketplaces where goods are sold or in the social media. So so we can see patterns faster through software and then have those models updated instantly so that all of our customers get the constant benefit of threats that are occurring in that moment. Right, in real time. Um, and in years past, if you had teams of individuals that might have been highly focused on particular brands, yeah. they weren't sharing that information as quickly as you could put it into software through mathematical right. models. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, Eliano, you mentioned it, it, this agentic AI. What I would like you to explain is why agentic AI is so significant here in terms of the capabilities that you've developed and how it's different from regular AI? Sure. Um, um, when you think about an, an, an agentic AI system, uh, you're thinking of an ecosystem of AI components. So you mentioned our uh, purpose we built, uh, oh, the LLM. Um, Rick briefly mentioned um, computer vision. Uh, we're basically talking about um, text, images, short form videos, uh, content, meaning whatever is on a thread, graph, the relationships between detections and phone numbers, IPs, and all sorts of other attributes. When you think about an agentic component, and you think about a workflow, you think about how to connect all that knowledge together, but giving AI autonomous capabilities to navigate through that knowledge and make the best outcome towards that threat. That's why the agentic component is important. Imagine what would it be otherwise. Right. If we had somebody, if we had an AI system that just looked at images, you would basically tell a human, hey, this image has this particular sports brand logo. And then somebody else say, oh, great. What I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to look at the rest of the thread and say, okay, the image may has an issue. Does the content also have an issue? So that would be a standalone capability. You may have another piece of um, uh, AI or a machine learning algorithm or a gen AI algorithm. So just the LMM that says this content has something to do with that particular sports brand alone. And then a person would have to go in and say, okay, I have a logo, I have text here that is important to my brand given this particular element. And then the human will say, let me open the customer guidelines and see if the customer is interested in doing something or not. Again, we can now say, okay, well, there's a guideline that a person has to go through. Rick mentioned, you know, in real time, threats coming. Well, did we just receive the threat that we already classified as a problem that we should take into account when we just analyze these four things together? Yeah. And once you conclude that, you then move into, okay, we see a copyright and a trademark infringing on this threat. Which one should I use to support this particular partner to take this down? Yeah. And what is the business problem? Is it a counterfeit? Is it um, a phishing problem? Is it a credentials threat? Is it a marketing, digital marketing diversion? Uh, is it misinformation? So every one of these steps, us humans are utilizing knowledge that are specific for that part of the process to make a conclusion. Right. The agentic portion is really that autonomous capability that is navigating through these different types of knowledge and helping us get to that outcome faster. And because it's running 24 seven, I always you know, joke about this, but in, in, in all serious, it doesn't have weekends. 
It does <laughs> for vacations. Holidays. It doesn't have bank holidays. It's yeah. always on. So that means if it's always on, we can actually get down to taking things down significantly faster. Yeah. Can go for millions of threads in minutes versus months. And that is really the power that we are honestly passing through to our customers. Yeah. That's really what matters at the end of the day. If you have a credential threat online for two weeks and that affected a million customers of our customer, that means that issue resulted in a significant impact. If we take that down in six hours, that may have affected 2,000 users. That difference is really what we highlight the AI for good. Yeah. And we are really in this business to really shorten that to minutes, it might be in hours, but we really want to be best in the class because we want to help everyone uh, in the world, you know, really not being affected by these threats. Yeah. Well, that makes perfect sense. So, you know, I know that you've said before, Rick, that, you know, there are a ton of cybersecurity tools out there combating cyber threats like phishing and ransomware and the like. Um, but, but I've heard you say that you believe that Flora really ups the ante here in innovative ways because it can detect, it can review, it can remove brand abuse quickly and at scale, as we've been talking about here, Eliano. So what, though, makes Flora different from other cybersecurity tools? Why do I need this in addition to other things in my security tech stack? Yes, it's a it's a great question. Many, many of our um, competitors, they might have one component or two components, and, and those components may not even be uh, homegrown or built. They're, they could be packages that they're utilizing to help speed up their process and still supported by hundreds, if not thousands, of, of analysts and and. Uh, humans that are that are working behind the scenes. I think the the kind of approach that we're taking is that artificial intelligence and certainly the AI for good, uh, you know, mission and, and value that we're going after is going to scale infinitely faster and with more accuracy than kind of humans. Now, humans aren't eliminated from this. Our experts are always kind of inserting themselves and tuning our models so that the agentic ecosystem of our platform can be best in class at each and every piece. Uh, but there's very few vendors that can detect the amount of problems. So if you look at counterfeit to fraud, to phishing, to impersonation, um, copycat, there's, there's a lot of use cases out there and our platform is really uh, able to detect, find, and take those down faster than anyone in the market. You know, I always love it when somebody answers a question before I ask it. And that was the question I was just getting ready to ask. And, you know, it, it, so I'm going to reiterate that, you know, brand management is a super important part of business operations and protecting that brand um, is it goes a long way toward helping companies stay competitive. And you just did a great job of riffing on that, Rick, you know, and think of things like, you know, people squatting on your website domain and, and engaging in fraud or phishing or impersonation, those sorts of things. So it really is important that it affects your, it affects your business reputation. It, it, it affects how customers feel about your brand, how, whether they can trust you, how loyal they are and all of that sort of thing. So it really is an important thing all the way around. Um, you know, we've talked a number of times in this conversation about AI for good. And I, I know that, you know, a part of your messaging is built around that and helping customers benefit from the good things that AI in general and Gen AI in particular are bringing to the business landscape, but also protecting them along the way. And that really resonates with me. Um, I'm guessing it might resonate with others as well. AI for good. Um, I have a feeling that this is something that you two and the team at Tracer are more than a little passionate about. What what sort of drove this commitment to AI for good? Yeah, it, it's probably um, a mixture of kind of we're, we're consumers just like everybody else and yeah. we have mobile phones and we're purchasing things and we're on marketplaces and we're, you know, getting Ubers and Lyfts and we're consumers ourselves and so are all of our employees. And we have parents, we have kids that are 
you know, really fighting for digital authenticity and, and what's authentic out there. So it's really a, a combination of that, plus I think our background. So both Eliano, myself, and a number of other uh, people here at Tracer, uh, we've been building highly sophisticated uh, machine learning capabilities for, for well over 15, approaching 20 years now. And, and I think we finally landed in an industry, this brand protection industry, where it meets external cybersecurity, internal cybersecurity, um, and you can really deploy something for feeling good about yourself. So it's, it's, a, it's a cultural charge that we have. I know our customers are equally uh, you know, looking for companies that can use technologies to help them scale our partners. So all of the platforms that we interact with on a, on a daily basis, where some of these threats are happening, they're highly invested in helping keep their platforms as authentic as they can. So I think when, when we work with them in a very, very sophisticated way to deliver crisp, clear, black and white, irrefutable evidence that someone is a fraud or someone is taking, you know, offense against one of our brands, um, then they can take it down with passion and with, yeah. uh, with speed. So I, I think it's, a, it's an ecosystem that really does want to use technology to operate at the speed of light, just like the bad guys. Yeah. I love it. Eliano, anything to add there? Yeah, I was going to, um, the, I was going to give something a little bit even more generic, but I think it will be, um, important, shall we? So. I often speak about this in, you know, conferences, media, etc. The world is really divided at the moment between the fear of AI versus the benefits of AI. And you hear this every day on, you know, sometimes by big voices and there is all sorts of regulation coming in, a lot of it really fearing what can happen. And I'm always very vocal about the benefits that AI can do to humanity in pretty much any sector, all the way from healthcare, which affects all of us, right. uh, to transportation, to online security, because no one likes to see, you know, a simple, you know, fake uh, version of yourself, maybe in ways that you necessarily didn't like exposed on social media when it's actually fake. So yeah. just that as, as an example, or maybe a fake diagnosed in an hospital created by a gener uh, generative AI tool that actually, you know, may say that you have a particular issue when you don't. And, and, and therefore, when you think about that dilemma of fear versus benefits, as more companies deliver AI for good, the more the humanity will realize the amount of benefit that exists with AI. So every place that for sure Rick and I will work, we will always try to demonstrate that the benefits really are way, way substantially bigger than the fear side and that we shouldn't stop researching, open sourcing and continuing to work in AI because we as humans all benefit from it in big ways. So that's, you know, a little bit of a different perspective, but we really hope that by us releasing more AI for good, that is really helping uh, the end users that uh, really we contribute, even if it's just a tiny bit to yeah. helping people shift more to the AI for good versus the fear, because that's important for us as human beings. Uh, you know what? It's a legacy contribution. I mean, it really is. There are a lot of people in this space and, you know, a lot of focus on how we can build and launch and leverage the tools that we're creating to make money and everything else. And obviously you want to do that as well, but I really love the commitment to you and the passion for AI for good and really helping educate and protect. I think that, I think that's important. And I think that, you know, as you both know, you know, when you have conversations about artificial intelligence and generative AI, there, there's a chasm, you know, there are people who are very, very excited about it. And there are people who are very concerned about it. So I love the fact that what you're doing is addressing that and trying to help protect and allay fears. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Thank you. So as we wrap the show, Rick and Eliano, I'd love for you to share one piece of advice for leaders within organizations who might be responsible for brand protection. Chances are good 
they might not yet be using Agentic AI as part of their brand protection and security tools, but maybe, hopefully, we've inspired them to think about how this could be a game changer for them and their organization. So now that we've got their attention, what advice can you give them as they think about beginning this journey? Rick, I'll start with you. Sure. So I I think that it's a it's a it's a team based approach. One thing that we are really trying to foster is an effective collaboration between the security teams, the legal teams, the risk teams, and marketing of our customers to all work together. We are seeing a bunch of silos that have popped up where each of those, uh, call them executive sponsors and users, have particular tools and they don't all collaborate and communicate with one another. So I think if there's one piece of advice that, that I could give is really look at holistically both your internal cybersecurity and your external cybersecurity as one and bring all of those teams together with a platform provider like Tracer that can really solve a whole bunch of problems rather than keeping things siloed into different groups. I think that's good advice. Break down those silos. Eliano? Yeah, you know, I was actually going to, to talk about that interception. You can see how much me and Rick are. <laughs> um, the only one that I was thinking is go and speak to us, but I'll keep that to a second part. No, no uh, seriously, I, I think it's important that uh, the brand owners um, and the uh, security, marketing, legal teams get together and really look in the market of who is actually different and why is that important for them. Their efforts may actually be significantly impacted and they are not even noticing. Yeah. They might be spending millions of dollars with ads and there are hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent by the bad actors that are consuming that uh, positioning and they don't even know. Yeah. Or they might be buying tools to look at what are the risks of people penetrating in, and we are catching that with scripts on websites that aim to get in, but via an external part that they are not capturing. And um, I think that's really the advice is when you go out to see who can help you, like please try to actually um, go further and really understand who is actually doing this for real and not just talking about it or just not have, you know, buzzwords on the websites because like we are really doing it um, and it's very hard and uh, it's really difficult. We yeah. also learn a lot throughout building it and doing it. But I think we really um, ask them to, to like really understand who's different and why. Yeah. Um, that way they're going to you know, have a better return on their investments. Yeah. Well, I think that what I'm hearing there is do your homework. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there are solutions out there that might claim to have some functionality, some functionality built in alongside, we can do this, 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 and this. Um, but maybe when you're comparing apples to apples, that's not, you know, comparing these products to what you've built with Flora. Maybe it's actually not a comparison. So do your homework, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and in fact, I, you know, I couldn't put the stat out there for us to add up all the end consumers of our customers, it totals well yeah. over eight billion. So you can you can do some math on who our customers likely are. Right? Some of the biggest technology brands, or some of the biggest media companies, some of the biggest financial services companies on the planet. And and I think we've had a couple of customers maybe a year or so ago that you know maybe their legal team wanted to go somewhere else and try to get a reduced price, and literally they're back with us now. And, and I think Eliano hit it on the head is there's a lot of talk about using AI yeah. to scale, but there's very few companies that are actually doing it and have it in production with the accuracy and, and impact. So uh, it's a really good point. And, and so it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time to be the really? two of you. So, well, that's it for this episode of The Security Angle. Rick Farnell and Eliana Marquez, Tracer CEO and CTO, respectively. Thank you so much for joining me today. I, I knew this was going to be a fascinating conversation. Um, and I'm so inspired by what it is you're doing. And I'm definitely going to be tracking what it is you're doing in the brand security protection front, because I think there are very good things ahead. Um, 
to our viewers and listening audience, I'm Shelley Kramer, your host. Thanks for watching this episode, Exploring Agentic AI for Brand Protection and Security. If you've not yet subscribed to the Security Angle podcast, make sure you do that now. And remember, the Cube is your source for enterprise and emerging tech news. So keep it here and we'll see you next time.